Greetings, and welcome to day three of Gather for Summit 2023. We are about to enter into the rapid fire. Be joined by several minds for expressions. Let us prepare to explore. May our gather be well. Greetings, everyone. Greetings. We're happy to have you here. Panelists, I ask that you mute your mics. We're going to quickly introduce ourselves as we go around. We'll start with Sarusha. We'll continue to pass it on. We ask that your remarks be light as we enter into the rapid fire. Sarusha, please. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I'm Sarusha Govinda. I'm a um, South African digital strategist. I'm a, a science and innovation journalist and an XR filmmaker and currently conducting research on gender and the metaverse at Chatham House. Thank you, Sarusha. Bernice. Hello, thanks for having me. I'm Bernice of Loman Creative Services, where we are a one-stop shop for branding, marketing, and tech, assisting ministries and businesses, as well in the in-person uh, 2D, as well as the 3D metaverse world. So thank you for having me. Excellent. Abdul. Good morning. My name is Abdul Giabala, and I'm the founder and CEO of Innovate Technologies, Inc., which is a metaverse media production and marketing agency. It's a black startup founded in Los Angeles, California. Thank you guys for well, having me. Thank you. We welcome you. Adrian. Peace, everybody. Uh, Adrian Rashad Driscoll, um, XR expert, co-founder of Collimation. We tell stories, we make experiences, and we try to get more people um, into the space. Thanks for having me. Paul, you're up. Yeah, good. Evening, everyone. It's nighttime in Africa, uh, or going to nighttime in Africa. I am Paul Simon, uh, the CEO and founder of Africa VR Campus and Center. And what we do is we lead the campaign for VR use from the grassroots going up. Excellent. Andre. Hi, all. <clears throat> I am CEO of Metaverse Bay. We are um, a platform, educational platform, and uh, on the mission to rebuild trust in Web3. Uh, to get rid of scams, basically. Uh, we, I am a Metaverse Explorer myself. I've explored more than 100 platforms so far. And right now we are performing an industry-wide research of the Metaverse space, including Web3 gaming, um, to understand the key reasons why a lot of platforms failed in last year. Excellent. Andre, panel, we welcome you. To the audience, welcome to the intersection of innovation and human progress, a rapid-fire dialogue brought to you by Gatherverse 2023. We only have a little bit of time today in this day three, as we have a lot to cover. We will cover it. Let us prepare to explore on these narratives. Bernice, I need to know something. I want to understand, when we look at human development, when we look at growth, when we see what's happening at the avid rise of technologies such as XR, metaverse, if you will, artificial intelligence and machine learning, and we'll continue to see more persistent technologies continue to evolve but we must consider, it seems to me, that when we're thinking about the evolution of technology, what about the evolution of humanity? The question is, panel, and we'll go round robin on this very quickly, yeah. how do we define the role in human progress as we see technology advancing? For me, innovation, let me dissect. Innovation for me would be creativity, creating new ideas, um, new concept, um, new products, businesses, services, um, and how it will um, assist with the human progress would be, for me, I've seen productivity, increased productivity. Um I, right now we're using AI, um, chat GTBT, uh, chat GBT, um, to assist with productivity, our blogs, we're able to, uh, we're able to share more information at a fast pace. 
um, we're able to get more of our products and our services out to our clients. Uh, and we're assisting and helping our clients as well in ministry and businesses to do the same. So um, as it relates to human progress, I would definitely say uh, increase productivity. Indeed. Paul, do we see the balance, though, of human progress on every continent? And do we feel as if we're getting the right type of representation, the necessary representation for all stakeholders when it comes to contributing these technologies, sir? Well, we will say yes and no. Uh, we'll say yes and no, definitely. It's, it's, um, since we began our, you know, our outreach, especially the events that we've been holding in the metaverse. I was actually shocked because I thought it's only Africans who didn't know about VR. But I've met 101 people who come into those events and they're asking, how do I move from point A to point B? And some of them are, you know, uh, lecturers, uh, professors in big time uh, universities across the world. And so when we talk about innovation, there is also the issue of acceptance and maybe adoption. Uh, to this new innovation and maybe even to answer the uh, the question of how does it improve governance how does it improve the wholesome human well-being across the world i think it is also good for us to, to look at that abdul when we talk about human progress and development from your lens and experience of what you're working on with innovate are we headed in the right direction uh i i definitely truly believe we are uh, the one thing that I think people ultimately need to understand is the underutilization of the virtual spaces and mediums that we have. And kind of what my mission and goal has been for the last seven plus years has been to create equitable, immersive and interactive experiences for content creators and consumers alike, where the virtual technology that we have, whether in the VR, AR, metaverse and mixed reality space in general, Web3. Uh, there's a high threshold of entry point for people to consume and digest the uh, content. And there's also not much incentive for creators to develop. So utilizing and understanding the capabilities of the virtual technology, not just as a form of entertainment, but rather solutions to some of the world's biggest problems sure. that we have, is I think that should be the focus. Focusing on how it can solve certain problems, uh, I think you can really see that the versatility of the technology that we have out there. Sure. Thank you. Well met so far, Sarusha. I have a little bit of an itch happening here when we think about the progress of human progress and development. And Abdul is saying we're heading in the right way. And I submit that many millions on this planet believe we are. And I too think that we're headed in a good way, completely in the right way. Subjective. But I need to understand. And the reason I say it's subjective is because I think about the word ethics. You know, with Gatherverse audience, we talk about accessibility, education, community development, safety, privacy, wellness. And we talk about ethics as well, being the humanity first standard approach to how we look at technology. I have to ask, Arusha, what ethical considerations should be taken into account when pursuing innovation for human progress? Well, I, I agree that ethical um, considerations need to be at the center of how we think of innovation. And I, I think we are moving in the right direction, but we're speeding towards progress without any guardrails. We're not protecting people who could um, be um, manipulated or could be taken advantage of by nefarious actors as we speed towards this amazing progress and this amazing use of innovation. We're not ensuring that rights are being protected, particularly for women and people of color and vulnerable communities. We're not ensuring our privacy and our data is being protected. Um, recently, a report has come out, and I'm sure a lot of us have read it because we've been speaking about it, about the um, 50,000 plus users whose biometric data has been cap uh, captured and stored and they've been able to be identified just from hand ge uh, gestures and eye use, uh, the, the eye tracking um, in, in using this technology. What is happening with that biometric data? Did we know how it was being shared? Did we know where it's going? Do we know where it's sitting now? And how can that be used in the future um, You know, to take advantage of people? Um, we're seeing this already now on a massive scale and we're not doing enough as we're speeding towards progress um, to make sure that the rights are being protected, to make sure the right ethical frameworks are in place sure. um, and to make sure that we're doing enough. Sure. 
Andre, I have a big concern when I start to think about Kodak avatars that was announced by Meta in October. You mean to tell me you could take a human eye resolution scan, an active live scan, translated, transliterated a version of myself, bring that into a virtual space, unidentify, unidentifiable or undiscernible, excuse me, to the human eye, whether they're talking to me, Christopher Lafayette, or my avatar representation of me, with controlling a deep fake, knowing the power of AI and what we can happen, see happen in real time, I have a real concern with who owns my likeness and image within that space, knowing that there's platforms out there that can synthesize my voice in its entirety within seven seconds and less. Who owns all that? Who owns me in this virtual space in this world? It certainly is a concern. Mark Zuckerberg, I know some of your policy people are listening. We do enjoy a relationship with Meta in terms of friendship and people that we know that are good people. We hope that you keep the people that are working there now today that are working on this because right now we're seeing more layoffs and firings happen in the metaverse-based space and emerging technologies than ever we've seen before since I would assume the bubble. Andrea. From your lens and what you're building, are we headed in the right direction? Uh, I would consider, like, even improve your concerns because I would not be concerned regarding Meta itself or any for-profit organizations. I'll be more concerned if uh, these things will go into basic known code solution and which provide this uh, option to everybody uh, except specific organizations because then uh, anybody with ill intentions can create anything uh, and then put it onto crime or create something like a footage of the camera where you committed something wrong and wrongdoing. And it will be impossible for you to prove as in case you don't have alibi or something that you yourself was not there present. So I would personally less concern regarding specific organizations, corporations, which are liable for the law and they can be sued and everything, but more about specific ill-treated people who do exist in the world. So um, this is my, my major concern. And I believe uh, the only way so we can go with that is something which is happening right now on Twitter and on Bizmet as well is uh, blue checks, even though it's hilarious, but it is something we are actually heading towards that you'll be confirming your identity through like a check mark or something, which will be issued through the government or through other services or maybe through um, blockchain uh, confirmation. Because I kid you not, like in 10, 15 years, maybe even sooner, uh, you'll open your phone and you will see hundreds people like you on TikTok, Instagram, and everywhere, basically saying, di promoting different products and everything. And it will be impossible to tell the dif difference who is who and what is sure. who, what is real. So I bet we are going towards something crazy, which we cannot even comprehend right now. So well, what we're going we have to do our solutions. So let me interject on that. And when we talk about this blue check nature, we've been hearing it just this week. Audience met it, said, hey, you know what? We're going to roll something out and in the Pacific South, if you will, of our good friends over in Oceania. And they said, hey, we're going to roll out blue checks and you can pay for it. You'll pay a little bit more for iOS. I guess that's their attempt to get back at Apple since they had such great privacy standards against selling our data. But they said, we're going to roll out with these blue checks. We've seen the thing, same thing happen with Twitter. They have a very low threshold of what they've sold so far. Elon Musk hasn't been successful. But we see what's happening with that. But there used to be a time where you get my data and my information in exchange for me being able to use your platform for gratis, for free. There was a fair barter. There was an unspoken barter, a trade, a deal. Now we're coming into this. Not only do you get my data, but now you want my money. I don't know where that stands. And I don't know if that's necessarily the successful direction that we need to hold on. But we'll have that for another day, I suppose, when it comes to Gatherverse. Adrian. I want us to talk about something because we're talking about the volatility and the disruptive nature of emerging technologies. You, as somebody that's an expert in music, we're happy to have you, as an expert in music, we see what's happening through the ages, if you will, over, let's say, the past decades of the volatile nature from Napster to Stream to iTunes and what's happened in the music industry. I don't know if there's been too many industries that's been more disrupted than music. When we think about this horizontally with all the other different platforms that abide and industries that exist, has music come on out on the other side of this in a good way, or is it still being devastatingly disrupted and impacted from what you're seeing, Adrian? Um, wow. Both, really. I, I mean, it, it has its positivity for sure. Um, you know, look at progress. What's accessible now? You go from having a 
an eight track to a cassette to a CD. Now you can have, you know, millions of songs at your, the touch of your fingertips. That was un, unheard of, right? The, the, the issue is that also generates a lot of noise, right? So people can't, people can't access you. And, and I think it correlates perfectly with what you were just talking about, because it's like people put a lot of, a lot of weight on the technology and it doesn't, the technology doesn't matter. Right. It's what people do with it. You know, a, a car can be a, a tool or a weapon. Right. Same with AI, same with any of this. So I, I think ethically and, and it just it lends itself so well, we have to look at the source and not give so much so much um, power to the tech because the tech means nothing. Tech should be invisible in all things. Right. This is just, oh, well, people need to stop using tech in a negative way. And if we have some type of authentication, you know, um, you look at a blockchain, for example, I, I think that's going to be the way to, to get past all of this. Sure. We often talk about Web3 audience. We also talk about the disruptive nature of what we're looking at when it comes to Web3. And people are highly invested in DeFi, DAOs, DApps, decentralization standards. But many of us know that we're not completely have entered into Web3. Uh, I would submit and argue that we haven't completely a- arrived when it comes to the metaverse, Bernice. You know, a lot of people say, hey, the metaverse, Paul, has arrived in its totality. But the reality, we haven't even had broadband and Wi-Fi access arrive in its totality. Yes. What are we doing when we sit here and live in these hype cycle, marketed, projected narratives? Audience. Do you believe that the metaverse in Web3 has completely arrived? Now, I will submit and I will put a caveat that it's good for the time now present. But in no stretch of our imaginations do I believe that we believe that we're here. Audience, in the comments, are we headed in the right direction? Bernice, when it we, comes to our we, progress, where are we at? Go ahead. We are headed in the right direction. I do agree with that. And... But, however, I do agree that we have not arrived uh, with our clients just uh, a little over two years ago. And even now we have clients who are just getting in the swing of things for live stream, uh, just getting during the uh, the pandemic era. Uh, and so now we are assisting our clients with getting into the metaverse space. Just last night, I was speaking with a client who she assists with grant positioning and trying to help her maneuver into the metaverse. Um, and, and just as of yesterday, I was helping with the onboarding process for a, a lawyer who she's wanting to get her presence in the metaverse. And so I'm assisting all the time into the onboarding process. And I get the hands on in knowing that we are not there yet. There are still people are trying to maneuver through what does that look like with the immersive experience? Um, So we're definitely not there yet uh, only because I'm, I'm there. We have a virtual metaverse office. And so I spend time with assisting people and helping them with their getting on the headset. What does it look like to just maneuver jump to the basics of the uh, the immersive spaces. So no, we are not there yet. Paul, when I think about the barriers to entry, removing barriers to innovation, here we are in Gatherverse, a free platform. We're 13 events deep. We've made it absolutely free because I wanted to remove and we wanted to remove barriers to innovation because not everybody wants to nor can afford in these troubling times. Have mm-hmm. you seen the price of an avocado? Have you seen the price of an egg? Not everyone can afford over $1,000 tickets to get necessary, important information that we need to be equipped with to be able to move forward. Audience, when we talk about disruptive nature, removing barriers to innovation, what do you consider one of the biggest barriers to innovation, Paul? What are one of the biggest barriers to innovation that you're looking at, sir? It's good that you mentioned about about um, the price of this. But today morning, I bought some market as if I was buying a, a, a tot of cocaine in the back street. It, it's it's you know give me give me a dozen in the other side. Uh, but when you talk about barriers, they are, they exist, and they really do. It took me four years before I could meet a fellow African in virtual reality in yes. any VR yes. app. So yes. when we have innovation and when we we are talking about the metaverse, we need those barriers removed. And one being that I have personally done uh, here in Africa is we realize that the cost of the headset itself is a mammoth uh, mountain to deal with. And so what we did, we said, 
we are not going to wait for Meta to come in and start, you know, donating these things to us. We're going to buy them and ship them here to Africa and give them to as many people as we can, especially the social leaders in the grassroots. Because the number one thing is we can't have just a corporate using this. We yes. need also the, you know, the young guy down there who is finishing his high school thinking about what do I do? We need to give them options. Like there is something called the metaverse and you can jump in it and earn a little bit of money. Let's even talk about how you can earn. You know, here we have a music artist and I love that because I've been trying to tell African artists, you can actually perform in the metaverse. You can go there and, and, and sing to these guys and have a few green coming to our side. So let's remove those barriers and let's have the and this one i'm taking very i'm taking it very fast let's have the big core like mayor going back to their beginnings you know when mm -hmm. mark zuckerberg began facebook he, he wasn't looking at the dollars in fact his question was how do the guys in the campus communicate with each other how do i get the thoughts of lafayette who is in the other module doing the other module how do i get his mind how what what is in your mind Yes. And then all of a sudden, we are talking about capitalism. We are talking about, I want you to pay for your blue tick. We need those barriers removed. We need those guys who are down there coming in, you know, in, in such a summit and making his voice heard. And in using that innovation, asking himself, and now that I'm here, what do I do yes. with this tool? How do yes. I earn a coin if I can? You know, yes, that's Paul. what I'm talking about. I tell you what, Paul, if you keep going, we're going to have to add a day four on here because I'm in... I, I am thrilled and excited to hear that someone has a heart and compassion um, amongst all of us when it comes to this. And you may be our whole entire day for Abdul, Andre, Sarusha. What are the next steps that we need to take for progress? Abdul. Uh, I, I like to say that, you know, there there is no incentive in innovation without eliminating those barriers. And I think there's a responsibility that we have as entrepreneurs, as developing companies and things of that nature to, to keep the pressure on the larger gatekeepers of the industries uh, to continue innovation and to make it more inclusive and accessible for all. You know, we right. live in a, in a globalized economy now where essentially the world is equipped with the most powerful device in our pockets. Right. And I think being able to develop uh, activations, VR, AR, metaverse related, and even Web3, um, using those things that are accessible and affordable because people already have access to them. We live in a world of a creator economy. I think when people realize the value that they have, that they are the product that is being sold. They are the creators of the content that exists on the internet that these larger industries are profiting on. Now, the beauty of Web3 is it removes that middleman. You can go directly from source to customer and be fairly compensated, have control over your intellectual property. So I think that the globalization and the decentralization that comes with Web3 and the metaverse is letting people know the power that they truly have as creators, as mm -hmm. owners of their content and being able to leverage uh, that, that kind of content uh, and put the pressure on the gatekeepers to not just steal and, and use and utilize what they have and give sure. them chump change, but rather bring them on as, uh, as potential partners. Thank you for sharing that, Abdul. I tell you what, back to this blue check mark, uh, Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, you want our money. I'd like to see it the other way around with the content that we contribute, with the millions of people that are contributing content. Can we get paid? Can the contest and the artists and the creatives that are being disrupted by artificial intelligence, because we know it's only going to get taller, it's only going to be more impactful. We must preserve our audiences when it comes to our artists. Truly important. I don't know what this may mean to any of you, but it means almost everything to me, Andre, to really be very brief with the very finite minute we have. What are the next essential steps? Sarusha, we're coming to you. Uh, one more short phrase, which will be put you some things to thought to thought about is unfortunately i would say right now we're recording with web3 is we are just packaging web2 stuff 
So uh, I've been into crypto for six years and into matters full time for last year. And what I see right now, we are just transitioning from user based approach to wallet based approach. Yes, maybe you will have some sort of pseudo anonymity, but you can still discover what person is behind the wallet. Uh, but unfortunately, right now, there is not yet yet, yet to be discovered sure. a solution where it's impossible to track data completely. And right now, already a lot of projects are basically focus on the same thing. Let's track sure. wallet data instead. And and that will give, instead, imagine now, uh, not the website knows about you, but they are inside your wallet. So now they know where you, where you spend all your money. So they don't sure. even have to, to track your specific data on the specific website. Sure. So I don't, I don't know exactly uh, where we're heading and how that will be solved in this uh, point of our discussion, ethical discussion, especially. Uh, and the innovation is happening in this space, 100%, primarily grid focus based. Uh, and capitalism one, uh, but this is what people also have to think about. Indeed. That is not just pure uh, world ahead, and we have to think about a lot of things we have to overcome, I would say. Thank you, Andre. Adrian, stay with us. Sarusha, send us off. Oh, I think just at the crux of all of these issues is both the barriers to access and also the solutions would be education. There's a very low level of digital literacy across the board. And I, I've worked in VR in Africa for more than 10 years. I know it's there, but the level of access and digital literacy are underestimating the power of what people can do. And you're asking, how can we make sure that they're getting the blue checks from us as a community, as a people who use these technologies and internet, we have the power to ask policy makers to ask the big tech to cater to what we want to meet us where we are but we need to improve digital literacy for everyone across the board indeed when i talk when we talk about the validity of someone's nature of id and get a blue check so that we can assure you are who you are might we be extended the same appreciation when it comes to the protection and this necessary safeguards of our own privacy and data, am I protecting myself from would-be imposters or should I be more concerned about protecting myself with the platform that I'm interacting with and engaging in? Audience, follow everyone that's been with us today. We certainly enjoyed this rapid fire discussion. We have a lot more to cover. Adrian, stay with me. Bernice, Abdul, Andre, Paul, Sarusha, we shall meet again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Adrian, let's go a little bit forward here. Sure. Let's think about this for a moment. Audience, we're going to have a quick discussion mm -hmm. on the power of media. We're at the point where we talk about the power of motion art in the metaverse. I wanted to add this small section because... The safeguarded protection of our artists, Adrian, I know it means a lot to you and of certainly course. a lot to me. And I know you're seeing a lot down there in Los Angeles. What should we know today, right now, this very moment that we have about media and where we're at? Um, I mean, the, the amount of things that are placed to keep us safe are just as dangerous to everyone else. So I, I think it extends to your point, you know, um, if I want to go pay for a blue check, well, cr criminals have money too. It's like a, it's like an ad, you know, like the top ads are people who are trying to scam you. Why? Because scammers have money too, you know? So it's hard for artists to understand because it, there's so much noise. People come from every direction saying, Hey, you could do this, you could do this, and this. And most of the time their, their intention is just to get your money as opposed to actually do anything that's going to be beneficial to you in the long term. Indeed. Adrian, let me ask you with this final question with the few minutes that we have. Mm -hmm. What's the most important thing that we should be looking at when it comes to music today and the preservation and the necessity of preserving our artists and our communities with the technology that we see that's continually to add disruption? What are you saying to the musicians and the artists that are with us today? I'm saying stop being afraid because, you know, most of our influence comes from fear. The news is trying to scare you. People are trying to scare you. Oh, social media is the devil. No, it's not. You know, at, at the end of the day, people want to be able to provide a service. And I, I believe that most people, most people aren't bad. 
you know, most people don't want to harm you, you know, so the only way this technology is going to grow and the only way you're going to be able to scale your your options is to to jump in, to not be afraid, to stop being so fear based, because that's don't that's how we're controlled is through fear. So let let go. Trust a little bit, you know, so be smart, but trust, trust a little bit more. That's that's what I tell all my artists and I see it to tell artists uh, going forward. You heard it here, audience. Take advantage of the time. Get it while the getting is good. Mm -hmm. Don't be the first one to dip in your toes. Go all in. Right. Adrian, we always welcome you here with our Gatherverse community. Thank you, Christopher. To our audience that's with us, get ready to join us on an incredible panel. We're getting ready to take off. We're continuing our exploration as we move forward with our Gatherverse Summit 2023, day three. Share this with someone. Take screenshots. Let someone know that we're here. This is part of your community. Share this with us. We welcome you. Adrian, stick with us. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.